I can't believe it's already been two months since I first started cosmetology school at the Aveda Institute Portland. So I decided to give you guys a little bit of an update on what I've learned so far and what I mean by that is things that I've learned along the way, not necessarily what kind of techniques I've learned. I'm excited to share some things that I think could be really valuable if you are thinking about starting cosmetology school. Hello everyone, my name is Alana and I am a hair design student, as I mentioned, at the Aveda Institute Portland and I, again, wanted to reiterate that I'm going to share some things that I have found to be really important when it comes to entering a cosmetology school that I think you guys can really take away. Make sure you subscribe down below and join the Kid On Squad. And without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about what I've learned so far. Let's talk about the first thing that I feel like is going to be the really obvious one, but you are in school to learn. Mistakes are going to happen, and yes, you are going to fuck up your mannequin. When I was learning how to do long round layers, let me tell you, I did the most atrocious atrocious job on my mannequin. I cut some places way too short. I didn't section it off like I thought I did correctly and it was really uneven and choppy and I was really disappointed in myself because I was thinking to myself, is there any way to come back from this? I was able to figure out what I did wrong in the end and I had cut my guide a little bit too further back so it ended up being really short. So I decided to redo that and I ended up having to go shorter on my mannequin, but my mannequin ended up looking like Rachel Green and I was really happy with how the haircut turned out. Yes, it was a lot shorter than what I anticipated, but I think I was able to come back from it after that awful mistake. Another terrible mannequin mishap was when I was doing a men's crop cut and I just screwed up so badly. I got way too clipper happy. I ended up getting some balding patches on my mannequin. It was really bad. And I did redo it. And yes, there still are balding pieces on my mannequin. It looks a lot better with a lot more shape. But I can't wait for my next phase to give that mannequin a total fade. So it will look normal again. But that was definitely a harder haircut for me, so just know like you are going to make mistakes, you are going to screw up your mannequins from time to time. But what's important is that you immediately learn like what you did wrong and how you can come back from it and how you can fix that mistake so it looks a lot better. As I mentioned before, you're in school to learn, mistakes are going to happen, you're not going to be perfect. It's going to be okay. I promise. For this next one, I hate to say it, but if you think it's not gonna happen to you, oh, just you wait, but you're gonna cut yourself with your shears, I promise you. So right here, I've healed, but I have cut, like in between my pointer and my middle finger on my right hand, at least five times. And they haven't been like terrible, but I've gotten like a bunch of bloody nicks right here, and it sucks. So I usually get them when I am doing the shears over finger method and then I end up kind of nicking my, I guess, in between, I don't, these are, I wouldn't say like knuckles, but like, you know, in between those fingers. So that's where I've been getting most of my cuts from. Obviously, I'm very scared for cutting my fingers here because I know that's going to be really painful and I really hope that doesn't happen. So I'm really grateful that I've only cut myself here, which hasn't been as painful. But just know, like, it's going to happen at some point. It's not going to be your first time cutting yourself. It's not going to be your last time cutting yourself. Yes, you have to be careful, but it is going to happen. So just prepare yourself for that. It's funny because we haven't even learned first aid yet. We are going to learn that in our next phase. I'm surprised we didn't learn that as one of the first things when we started haircutting one. Now I'm going to be moving into haircutting two. So I'm excited to learn first aid procedures in the salon and how we can mitigate that and fix those situations. But just be prepared that cutting yourself is going to happen at some point and it's always important that you get your instructor if it gets really bad and if it's super painful because the last thing you want to do is transfer blood onto a client. That is just a huge health violation that's just waiting to happen. So make sure you tell your instructor if that happens 
because it will happen at some point. So just brace yourself for that. Number three, let's talk about the kits that they give you as part of your tuition. This is my kit, but it did not come with this beautiful rose gold case. I got that off Amazon. Let me show you what came with my kit in terms of storage. It was this measly little backpack. And while I was able to fit all of my hair supplies in it, I'm telling you, if they give you just like a backpack or a duffel bag, it's probably not going to be very organized for you. I didn't like it because I had to fumble and reach into things and things were getting lost. I felt really disorganized. So I was like, screw the backpack. I'm going to invest in this case. Some schools will give you a case. My school did not. So I got this off Amazon for about $100. It's really great. I love the color. The quality is really great. I mean, I like that it has all of this storage and all these components. So there's different layers. Aside from the kit, you are going to get things in your kit that you're not going to like. You do get a lot of like cheap things in your kit. So over time, just know that there are going to be things in your kit that you're going to want to replace. Like for an example, these metal clips right here, I hate these so much because they rust. I've had to toss so many of these because I'm not able to get the rust off and I'm not going to put rusted clips in my client's hair. So I just invested in these clips instead and I got them from uh, Framar or Framar. I know that's like a really popular brand amongst people in the hair design space. So you can get their products off their website or off Amazon. So I have been getting so many of these cute colorful ones. I've also replaced some of my cutting combs. I lost some of them already. So I replaced these that I got off Amazon and there's other things that I plan on replacing. Another example, if I can pull one out. So like these brown brushes, well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They're just kind of cheap looking. And so I do plan on replacing these round brushes with the Olivia Garden ones. I've heard those are really nice quality round brushes and just other brushes that eventually I'll replace later on. You will probably will replace your hair dryer at some point. I hear that the hair dryers that they give you do break or burn out after a certain period of time. So I'll probably invest in some new thermal tools along the way. You may want to invest in some new shears because the shears that they give you are really cheap. I hate the shears that they gave me, but I can't afford to spend a lot of money on nice shears when I am able to. I will because I want good quality shears that I can snip hair a lot easier. Just be prepared that eventually there will be things that you will replace in your kit over time. I promise you. And it's perfectly fine because you want to be using the best quality tools possible as you grow and improve your skills as a stylist. Number four. Now, this is my personal suggestion. You don't have to follow this one. If you want the best quality of life while you're in school, I highly recommend that you attend school part-time and not full-time. Most people in my class are part-time and not full-time. A lot of us need jobs. Tuition's not cheap, so having a part-time schooling is going to be great so you can still work while you're in school. Also, one thing that I really like about my program is that I don't know about other Avedas in the country. The Aveda Institute Portland does Portland and Vancouver, Washington. There's two branches. We have a hybrid schedule, which is really awesome. So on Tuesdays, which are our theory days, we actually get to have school from home and get to be on Zoom meetings pretty much all day long. It's a lot more exhausting than it sounds, but having the part-time schedule where you're only going to school on site twice a week and then you have that one day of theory where you're at home and you can wear whatever you want and you can be super comfortable and be in your own element it's been really great i have loved the quality of life that school has provided me and having that part-time schedule has been really nice for me to still work while still having a healthy school work-life balance and that way I can still enjoy myself on the weekends, which has been really nice. And I feel like a lot of cosmetology schools don't really give you that luxury. So 
if you can find a school that's accredited that has some sort of hybrid model, I mean, do your research. Try looking into that because it will truly give you just an amazing quality of life. Of course, like if you do want to graduate as early as possible and get your license, then you may want to go full time. But I feel like a lot of students don't go full time because people have jobs and they need to find some way to have time to work. So think about what your schedule and your financial situation is like so you can make that work. But being able to go to school part time on a hybrid model has been super awesome. And then once we are done learning theory, then that remote day does go away. And I think that only happens once we go into salon life, but even just still doing school three days a week is still not bad whatsoever. And I've really enjoyed that. This is one that I think is really important, especially if you have ADHD, but I highly recommend that you download all of your theory notes in advance before your lesson starts. That way you're not fumbling through everything as your teacher says, okay, pull this lesson up and download your notes or whatever. It's just gonna make you feel a little bit disorganized and it's gonna feel very chaotic. So if you have them downloaded ready to go, you're already one step ahead. I really recommend that you look at your weekly schedule ahead in advance. I believe the best way to find success in cosmetology school is to stay prepared and to be on top of your game. Number six. Remember when I said you're in school to learn? So this is gonna involve you staying humble. You're gonna get a lot of feedback and constructive criticism from your instructors. It's important that you accept that feedback. You don't argue with your instructors about what they're suggesting because at the end of the day, they are there to help you improve and they wanna see your success. Well, I can't speak for every instructor at all schools because I've heard a lot of horror stories. I will say I've been very fortunate enough to have really great instructors who do offer really wonderful feedback and really do care about our success. So stay humble, take that feedback graciously because at the end of the day, they are trying to tell you what you need to know to pass your state boards and to get your license. So don't ignore it and just trust what's being taught to you because you were there to get your training hours to help you get your license as soon as you can. And then that's what that feedback is going to be based off of. Please don't ignore it. Don't argue with it because it's going to help you improve and make you a better stylist at the end of the day. With Aveda, at least in our first phase, and again, I can't speak for all Aveda institutes or other schools, but during our first phase of the program, we were in haircutting one. And so Thursdays, we had model days. And so we were responsible for bringing a model in every Thursday. If you are in need of getting models basically somebody who you can do your hair on and you're doing a free service it is going to be important that you advertise for those models weeks in advance you should be able to get your schedule and know when you're gonna have to get those models so start advertising for them as soon as you can I really recommend free Facebook groups within your area or next door those are gonna be and your social media. Those are gonna be the three best ways to find models. Also, your friends, that's another great way. So add the fourth thing there. Most of my models that I got, a lot of them were my friends, and it was so cool that my friends got to see me in school and see me in my element and see what I have learned, and I was able to provide them with a free service, which is always so cool and exciting, and it gives you a lot of good practice, practicing on a real person and not a mannequin, and it will make you less nervous for doing hair on a stranger's head. Definitely first ask your friends and then if you have friends who aren't able to be your model, then that's when I recommend going to social media and also Facebook groups and next door because you will be surprised on how easy it is to get models. Now there were two times where I wasn't able to get models, but it's not the end of the world. I just practiced on my mannequin during those times and it was all good. But if you do need to get models, that's what I recommend to get them. Number eight, this is a silly thing, but if it gets really freaking hot at your school like it does with my school, I recommend investing in like a small portable fan. You can get one off Amazon. I think mine was like 16 or $17. It's like a mini clip-on fan that has like a USB plug-in. 
and I just plugged that fan in and it just makes such a world of a difference. It keeps me cool when things get too hot in there. So get a little fan for your station so you're not sweating throughout the day because there is nothing more miserable than being really hot throughout the day at school, especially when you're providing a service. It's so miserable. So get a little mini fan and I promise you will feel so much better at the end of the day. Drama. I will say I haven't really experienced any drama at my school. People in my class and at my school seem to be really friendly and I would say there really aren't a lot of like bad apples but if anything does happen at school I think it's so important that you ignore any like negative energy and bad vibes and to seriously just stay in your own lane. I will say I didn't go to school to make friends but knowing the extrovert in me obviously like I have made some friends and I do get along with people at my school and I enjoy getting lunch with some of the girls in my class. I still like to stay in my lane and mind my own business and really focus on me and my work so I can get the best education and make sure that I am doing what I need to do to ensure my success at school. Stay in your lane, focus on yourself, and do not get wrapped up in drama because it's only going to just distract you and it's gonna create a really negative experience in school. So it's just important that like when you're at school is to really just focus on you. Try not to socialize too much because you're going to get distracted. You could get wrapped up in something that you don't want to get wrapped in and it's going to deter from your success. And number 10, the last thing. I have seen so many horror stories on TikTok about people having such negative and awful experiences in cosmetology school and that makes me really sad because I am really fortunate enough that I am not having this experience. Granted, I've only been in school for two months so who knows, things could change but I absolutely hope nothing changes and things stay the way that they are. School is really not as bad as some people make it out to be. I think it's important that you try not to let any like social media horror stories scare you off from attending cosmetology school. Granted, everyone's experiences are going to be different, but I highly recommend that you go school shopping, you do a pros and cons list, and you truly find a school that's going to be the best fit for you and what's going to provide you with the most education. I've heard people saying that they've gone to school and leaving with not knowing anything, and I think that's kind of problematic. You shouldn't graduate school feeling like you don't know anything. I feel like I am learning so much in school and I'm excited to apply like what I've learned in school out in the real world and learn new things while I'm out in the real world because I know you keep learning once you're out of school. So it's not as bad as people make it out to be or so this is my experience but I want to let you know like I'm having so much fun. I look forward to going to school every single time I have class and I love learning new things. Please make your own judgment and don't let any horror stories scare you off from attending school because everyone's experience is different. And again, if you do want to be a cosmetologist or a hairdresser or whatever, you're going to have to go to school regardless. So you've got to suck it up at the end of the day. I hate to say it, but it is true. School is what you make it. And if you're going to go in with a negative attitude and mindset, then you're probably going to not enjoy yourself. At the end of the day, I want you to find a school that is going to be the best option for you in your education and what's going to prepare you for the most successful journey within your hairstyling or cosmetology career it's going to be so so important well there you have it that is my top 10 things of things that i've learned in cosmetology school so far what are some other things that you've learned so far along the way in cosmetology school if you've attended let me know in the comments down below and if you thought this video helped you and is getting you excited to attend cosmetology school make sure you give this video a thumbs up and i'll see you in my next video Bye!